friend, you are welcome to join with me, Olivia Robertson, in the mystical awakening of Virgo and Dharma. Know that in our highest spirit, we are awakened into star consciousness. We at the moment are in planetary consciousness. Now, we awaken the higher head center to be aware of the spiritual stars. Have a glass of water by you to drink when you return from semi-trance. Please keep your consciousness and don't go right out into traffic for half an hour. Come with me to the land of air, a beautiful island set in the sea the waters of the Atlantic Ocean washing its western coast. And we are aware that over the western ocean is the lost, the mythic land of Atlantis in which much of our spiritual teachings emanate from Egypt, Era, and the Americas. At the moment, we wish to join a ceremony at Cronigal Castle, southeastern Ireland. It is most beautiful because it is evening at the time of Virgo, of Lunasar, and beautiful golden light and long, long shadows the totem the mystic time of six o'clock. We hear the angels. We pause for a moment as we hear the bell, we see an ancient castle set amidst a circle of hills and the violet blue Mount Leinster range. Many, many trees are here between the fork of the Macha, the crow's foot of the Morrigan, the mother goddess, and this matriarchal center of the Tutha de Darnan power center is upon the tributary, the Derry grove of oak of the river Slaney, Shaunter. By the ancient castle is a ruined abbey, temple of the goddess Dharma. It is so lovely because it is filled with late roses in bloom and various, the future of Ireland of the west, and many wild plants and bushes and a a sacred thorn tree of the fairies outside it. We see a company assembled. There are two priests in the insignia of ancient Ireland, priestly headdresses and saffron robes. Their priestly headdresses are made of bronze and they wear blue and gold cloaks. The two priestesses wear the copper crowns of ancient era, white gowns and blue and gold cloaks. They hold wands, the priests hold staff. The women companions, and there are many here, and priest the priestesses are all dressed as the two leading priestesses. The women companions wear copper circlets. The men, orange headdresses, all wear blue and orange and gold cloaks, and they wear the Tara brooch. We look around and we see the four sacred treasures of the Tusa de Dana. In the west, we see a flowering rose bush denoting the element of earth. In ancient Ireland, the west was associated with high Brazil, Atlantis, and therefore land. In the north, we see a mighty cauldron of water. Water was of the north because it was the place of the Hyperboreans, the great icy ocean. In the east is the element of air, denoted here by burning incense. And in the south is the sun, 
place of fire. No, no, there's no roof here. And there's a dolman and a huge quartz stone. You know that quartz and granite hold energy, very strong fire energy. And now we see, to our surprise, that a veiled woman wearing a long white veil, the bride of Brigid, is seated upon the dolman. And you remember the four altar stones, the use for sacrificial rites, of killed victims and covered with their blood. In the matriarchal religion, the holy priestess, emblem of the mother, sat upon the altar stone, which was the Lear foil, stone of destiny. The stone of destiny of the fellowship of Isis is really the great Boulogne stone out in a neighboring field in the east, but this is the Lear foil of this particular Dana of uh, uh, Abbey. The first priestess, the arch priestess, holds up her wand, makes the sign of Dana a circle, and invokes the goddess. Divine Dana, star goddess of Atlantis, mother of the gods and goddesses of Ireland, inspiring the magical arts and bestowing bounty throughout the whole earth. We invoke thy aid, that in this hard age of fear, we may know thy many-colored land. We hope we will receive an oracle. This does not always happen. But now, in her flower-filled temple, Donna speaks. Know that the many-colored land of Tiernanog is with all who know the future with visionary eyes. The Tiananog, High Brazil, and on, exists in all time. The beauties of that place is seen by small children who play on dappled lawns and gaze with wandering eyes at flower and butterfly and many hued insects. Through the present, come to me, for the present is your gate. When worldly cares veil true vision, the passions clog the bright fire blood that courses through the spiritual body. When evil emotions of anger, envy, and jealousy corrode the soul, then not even the present is noticed or enjoyed. Life for the dull soul imprisoned in foolish preoccupations and unhealthy feelings is no life, but rather an existence that flees by in passing time. Yet to the depleted soul, it is a long drawn out wasteland of boredom, excited only by transient stimulation. Oh, thus a whole lifetime may be wasted by those with eyes that cannot see, ears that cannot hear, and a spiritual will unused. Awaken the glories of past civilizations, the dawn of consciousness, the memories of lives spent through a myriad of forms are all there for the initiate, who, through total awareness of the present, attains experience of the past. Through understanding the past of the earth, the wonderful creatures, the human race, the soul gaze understanding and true understanding, wisdom. Thus the soul is prepared for the second birth, the return to the innocence of angel childhood. In this state, the intellect is put aside, and the traveler in time enters into a new realm that for most of humanity is still the future. Ideal beings and trees and plants and animals are seen transposed, as it were, over dark cities with their ugly factories. The Golden Age signs for those who have, through awareness and the practice of the virtues, regain the use of psychic eyes and ears and feelings. This new awakening brings with it the fruit of past experience, 
So the wisdom of the sage is combined with childlike innocence. The harvest is reaped from the reenacting of past lives, and the growing of the seeds therefrom is the task of the present, that the glorious future gardens of delight may be manifested. All now give thanks for the oracle given through daughter of Dana, her priestess. May the goddess, the god, be in each one of us in perfection. The first, the first priest now stands forward holding aloft his staff. Companion who seeks a mystical awakening of Virgo and Dharma, knows of the gods and goddesses of Ireland, sons and daughters of the goddess Dharma, journey to Ireland in ancient times. Among these deities were the goddesses Brigid, the poetess, Morgan, the enchantress, Almid, the healer, Babe, the star of abundance, Flachter, the druidess, and Era, the generous. The god had amongst them, the gods had amongst them Mananan of the, of the sea, Angus, bringer of love, Corbury, the poet, Eabonel, the prophet, Gizmo, the great smith, and Lukna, maker of the Rora, the fool of Mananan, here of their descent, as, as recorded in the lower the Bola Aaron. They came without vessels or bells, in dark clouds over the air by the might of Druidry. For three days and three nights they caused the fog to be over the face of the, of the sun. But they were experts in pagan wizardry and learned in prophecy and magic. The second priest now stands forth and raises his staff. They had learned these arts in the four magical cities beyond the mist of the air, and these were Phalius, Gorius, Hindius, and Murius, places of science and magic. From Phalius, the deities carried the great Leofoil, stone of destiny. From Gorius, they brought the spear of destiny, and from Findius, they bore the sword of light. The great cauldron of plenty they carried from Murius. No company would go from that cauldron unsatisfied. But after the enjoyment of a golden age, foes rejected the ways of the tooth of Adanan and made battle with them. Thus did mankind lose the four greater treasures, which the Danan deities took with them, concealing in their shining palaces within the golden heart of the earth. From thence the Danan shall return to those who love them at the end of this age, bearing with them the treasures of love and wisdom, joy and abundance. For my friend, know that to the greater ones the earth is transparent, and to the great sages, such as A.E. Bard of Era, the golden ones still exist. They can descend into their golden palaces within the inner sun of the earth and ascend to their spiritual starry palaces in the sky. Therefore we do well to honour the Trotha de Danum. Now we see the first priestess approaching the west, place of the setting sun where we see a turret of the castle and in the distance we know of a standing 
singing stones. She offers smoking incense in the west, place here of the earth. I offer incense to the goddess Dana. She sitteth upon the stone of destiny, that is the earth, and in her left hand is a sheaf of wheat, which she taketh from her cauldron of plenty, that her son, the god Dagna, and those who follow him may feed all creatures upon the earth. And in her right hand she holdeth the sword of light, which she giveth to her son, the god Nuad, of the silver arm, and those who stand by him to defend the weak and the suffering. The spear of destiny by her side, she trusteth to her son and God Nur of the fiery wheel, and all who work with him to create a noble future through the will and magical arts. The second priestess speaks. Hearken to the voice of the goddess Dana, speaking to the god Nur, as recorded by the bard of Era, Aeon, A-E. I am the tender voice calling away, whispering between the beatings of the heart, and inaccessible in dewy eyes I dwell, and all unkissed on lovely lips lingering between white breasts in violet and fleeting ever from the passionate touch i shine afar till men may not divine whether it is the stars or the beloved they follow with rapt spirit and i weave my spells at evening holding with dim caress aerial arms and twilight drooping hair, the lonely wanderer by wood or shore, till, filled with some past tenderness, he yields. Feeling in dreams for the dear mother heart, he knew ere he forsook the starry way, and clings there, pillowed far above the smoke, and the dim murmur from the dunes of men. I can enchant the trees and rocks and fill the dumb brown lips of earth with mystery, make them reveal or hide the God, myself, mother of all. But without hands to heal, too vast and vague, they know me not. But yet, I am the heartbreak over fallen things, the sudden gentleness that stays the blow, and I am in the kiss the foemen give pausing in battle, and in the tears that fall over the vanquished foe, and in the highest among the Danan gods, I am the last council of mercy in their hearts where they meet justice from a thousand starry thrones. My heart shall be in thine when thine forgives. For a few moments we ponder upon this. Do we despise the mother? Let us ponder upon the mystery of the stone of the earth. Now the first priestess approaches the place of the north and she pours a libation into the cauldron of plenty, of fertility. And now she goes around the whole company, making a circle upon each brow, declaring these words. May true vision be with you in the name of Mari of the Mists, 
Atlantis, sister of Manana, of the oceans, hail to Mari and to Manana of all oceans. Let us feel within ourselves now, friend, serene emotions for only happiness, fertility, abundance, and spiritual riches come from cleansed emotion. Let our hearts be free of anger, greed, cruelty, jealousy, envy. These are nothing. They only come from the nothing. They are no more when we do not acknowledge them. We feel a heavenly peace within us. We feel no anger at anyone. We only pity those who despoil the earth. The true earth can never be despoiled, but still the deities reign in glory within the inner sun of the earth, and they reign from the stars of Pisces and all constellations. The first priest now approaches the east, place of spirituality, of the spear of destiny, the air. I offer incense to law of the long fight arm, who in the even time of life bringeth his autumn light to illumine tear Nanoke land of the youth. Some may visit the land while living on, on earth, as did Tig and his warriors. Lovely and fruitful is this land which we have come, said Tig, and happy the man whose natural lot is to live in it. The smell of the scented bright purple trees of their country for sufficient food for them. They went forward and found an orchard with lovely purple crested apple trees and leafy oaks of beautiful color and hazels with yellow clustered, uh, yellow -clustered nuts. <coughs> it is wonderful to me, my men, said Tide. I notice that it is winter with us in our land now, and it is summer here. Visualize now the land of Tiananog, of pure beauty, where joy abounds, because our hearts are pure and we are lifted up by spiritual light from the stars. For our next step from planetary consciousness is star consciousness. We, ex we now experience the mystical illumination of Pisces. However, we need to carry on the work of the deities according each to our own gift. So now the second priest holds aloft the sword of Lur in the place of the south, place of fire, and he invokes the god Midia Mac Angus. The loveliness of the land was unbounded. They came upon a beautiful bright wood with great purple berries on the trees. There was a beautiful, brilliant flock of birds feeding on these grapes, and they were white birds with purple heads and beaks of gold. They sang music and, myst and mystery as they fed on the berries, and that music was plaintive and matchless, for even the sick and wounded would have fallen asleep to it. Companions, may we attain the spring of Tirnanog, 
in the autumn of our lives. And he lifted up his sword and called upon Midia. I call upon Midia to bless and consecrate this rite, and from the south may all who, t who are touched by this great sword feel ascertained and alive. The second priestess approaches the west and invokes the god Manano Naklia. I invoke the god of Atlantis, Manano Naklia. May the ancient wisdom, through our understanding, bring in the new age of Aquarius. Friends, it is now necessary to blend all these radiations. Let us join the companions in their dance. Now, as each companion feels the power, he or she turns outwards with arms raised in blessing to all. Do likewise. As you dance, feel power through you, beautiful radiations of rainbow colors, perfect balance in you of love and truth, beauty and goodness. Power from the earth, power from the stars, Virgo, and Dana are united as we invoke the power of the constellation of Virgo. Virgo of abundance, come to us. Virgo of purity, come to us. Virgo of love, come to us. Virgo, come to Dana. Come to any who give us this harmony that we may give it to others. Use your third eye with your eyes shut and visualize the beauty of Tiernanog.
we may rest in our lovely western land of Tiananmen with our own, or so we think, our own ancestors, the Gales. But now, the priestess, the second priestess, announces a strange intention. Friends, we wish to reconcile the Gaelic tradition with that of the Americas, for both came from Atlantis. And the procession now is wending its way out of our lovely flowery Temple of Dana, round the ancient grey castle, and down an avenue of oak trees. Where are we going? Not the safe northeast that we're used to. We're going to the southwest, where standeth Mount Leinster and the Violet Mountains, where the Slaney meets the Derry, and where there have been strange rumours about the Clonigal Triangle, electromagnetic effects. People see things we call UFOs. Where are we going? We do not go far. We go down this avenue and we take a sharp turn to the right. We notice the procession of bringing little bells with them. They move up now, a laneway rising, and lime trees are planted here. And we look, suddenly we're in the element of air, we're risen right up, we see a beautiful panorama of the blue mountains of the cold, pale yellow light of the evening sky, the hills of violet and the patchwork of fields of orange, of harvest, and yellow, and soft yellowy green, and a beautiful field which is dotted with cattle, drops down, and on a further field we glimpse sheep. Where are we going? We arrive at the strangest building you or I have ever seen. It's 80 foot by 80 foot, rising 30 feet, with a domed silvery roof on each side, with an open space in the middle. The companions form the path of the sun in total silence round this building. And they then disappear inside. Let's follow them. When we enter, we gasp. What is concealed is a giant barn outside. It's something that looks from the 22nd century. These are standing stones, but not like new, not like Stonehenge or Avebury. They're like nothing we've ever seen. There are four mighty gateways formed by eight stones exactly at the four compasses. And we are told these come from Normandy, granite. Then we see eight more slates, and it looks all the world as if some strange entities could materialize on them. They are made from Cumbrian slate. But strangest of all are eight stones made of Kilkenny marble. The height of a short man, formed again in twos, around a great central space open to the sky. There's a strange window all the way round to which we cannot see. It only lets forth orange and gold and pale green light and this illumines the stones so that we see a silvery aura and green light around them the company still speaking no word makes a threefold circuit round these stones so they are four in all the fourfold spiral of tiamat the galactic dragon and now they stand at the center, at the quarters. And they make the sign of the eight-pointed star. For we see 
that the energies will run through the stones in the form of the eight-pointed star of Ishtar, of Sirius, who is connected also with the constellation of the Virgin, Virgo, and that of Leo, the Andro Sphinx. What is this? Quetzalcoatl, known to the Mayans as Kukla Khan, is the son of the mighty goddess Maya. He flies swift as a Quetzal bird, and from him flows waves of light and fire unto a plumed serpent. Beyond the first heaven of simple delights is the second heaven, Tilion Tipalan, land of the black and the red, west and south. There the great god Quetzalcoatl teacheth wisdom to initiates. It is a land celebrated by poets and greatly to be desired. Wise and good is the son of Maya. The second priestess now approaches the mighty gateway of the north, and we realize that they are making the same invocations as they did in the gentle temple of Dana, thus uniting both cultures. She speaks, I offer incense to the goddess Maya, mother of the gods and goddesses of South America. I have seen her shining with copper-colored light right across the sky. Star goddess, I intone thy song, O Maya, I intone thy song, that thou mayest descend to our magical house. I intone thy song in the hall of flames. I offer the incense that thou mayest intone thy song in the hall of flames. Let us serve in the hall of flames of the mighty magic of the copper shining goddess Maya. In the center of the palm of thy hand are we, thy children. Now the first priestess speaks. She is in the place of earth in the West, and she offers seeds therein. Maya is our mother. She astoundeth my heart. She hath not finished her great work. The priest knoweth of her. Yet she is to be seen where the merchants sell earrings of jade. In the place of wonders is she to be seen. Her lower part formeth the three heavens, and her upper part the earth. Her hair is the long grass and trees and flowers, and her skin lawn studded with little blossoms. Her eyes are little caverns, wells, and fountains. Her many mouths are great caves, and her nose hills and valleys. She hath given birth to a son, precious flower. From his hair groweth cotton, from his ears seed-bearing plants, from his nostrils a herb that heals, from his fingers sweet potatoes, and from his fingernails maize. From his every part cometh forth a thousand sorts of fruits and grains to feed all creatures. The first priest now speaks, approaches the place of the south, still using the same incense that was used in the temple of Dana. I offer incense to the god, to, god of compassion, Quetzalcoatl. This god made the journey to the house of the sun from which all life comes, that he might make a bridge from the sun to earth. And from the sun he gained the gift of music for the earth. Hearken to the tales, said the god Quetzalcoatl. When the earth is sick from silence, through, through we possess light and color and fruit, yet we have no music. We must bestow music upon all creation to awaken the dawn, to the dreaming man, to the waiting mother, or to the passing water and the flying bird. Life should be all music. Go, Quetzalcoatl, through the boundless sadness between the blue smoke and the spaces of the house of the sun. 
There the bright sun is surrounded by makers of music who blow their flutes sweetly, and with their burning choirs scatter light abroad. Go, bring back an, earth, an earthly cluster, the most flowering of those musicians and singers. And after much trial, Quetzalcoatl, bearing the musicians greatly, lest he should harm their tender melodies, a tumult of, la of happiness and laughter in his arms, set out on his return journey, generous and contented. Below earth raised her wide dark eyes to heaven, and her grace face shone, and she smiled. Now the first priest offers a libation of water in place of the north. And he, and he speaks, and this north, by the way, is oriented with the most ancient Druid burial ground in Europe. A raw in the north. By the will of Maya, Casacado was born of earth through Cotocul, the five aspected moon goddess of the Quincux, during the era of the fifth son of rain. As a mortal man, Casacado taught compassion for all creatures. As he grew up, evil magicians tried to tempt him to, for to perform sacrifices, but he would have none of this, being so fulfilled with love toward all living things that he could not even be persuaded to kill a forest bear or to pick a flower. But enemies of his teachings prevailed, and he was forced to flee from mankind. So Quetzalcoatl laid in a stone casket for four days and nights. After this, he donned his feathered robes and his turquoise mask, and he threw himself upon a great funeral pyre. After four days, he rose from his own ashes and gathered arrows of light. He ascended to the planet Venus, the second haven, from, thence, from whence he had descended. From Venus he rose to the third heaven of the sun and reigned there forevermore as the sun god Huitzilopochtli. May we all be found worthy when he returns to us with power and splendor. Now we watch as all four quarters are honored, the north with water, the east with incense, the south with a flame of fire from a flickering taper, the west, the but really our minds are not on the ceremony now, but we notice a comparison with the sacrificial lives of other gods. When we think of Quetzalcoatl, who taught compassion for all creatures, is he not like Christ? Is he not like the Buddha? Is he not like Rumi of Islam? People tried to tempt him to perform human sacrifices, but he would have none of this. He was filled with love for all living creatures. We notice that he was driven away from earth. He was buried in a stone casket for four days and nights. Is not this the god Osiris? Is not this our friends, the Tutha de Danan, who are said to have disappeared into the earth? Is not this you and me in our earthly bodies when we are buried or our ashes committed to the earth? Does not this tell us something? After four days he rose from the dead. He rose from his own ashes like the phoenix and gathered arrows of light. He ascended to the planet Venus, the second heaven. He had, a, please notice, he had descended from the planet Venus, that's planetary consciousness, but he rose higher after his noble act to save the earth, and he rose to the third heaven of the sun, and reigns there evermore as the sun god. Now please yourself, however little you think of yourself, think better of yourself, imagine yourself, because you have, descending into an earthly body, because that's what you've done. And imagine yourself, through generous love and compassion for all beings, rise first to Venus of love, the astral plane, and then to the divine realm of the sun, which is a star, to the stars.
Your body contains stars, the atoms. Electrons revolve around the central nucleus. You are a microcosm of the cosmos. But don't get too proud about that, because so is everybody else. So is a rat, so is a plant. In our own original way, we show forth the deities. Now we observe in the place of the south a small fire which the priest in the place of fire has lighted and each of companion, six of them, light torches. The first priest speaks. Let us form the hexagram of Virgo. Now the companions holding a burning torch moves to a particular place to form a hexagram. That is a descending tri triangle representing the power of the stars, in this case Virgo, which is blending the past but rather static virtues of the, our own Pisces era and the coming vitalizing area of Aquarius. So that, that we're doing this star of balance and one triangle represents the ancient wisdom of Atlantis and the other of the new wisdom coming in. Two triangles forming the star of David. The first companion speaks. I hail the guardians of the white flushed star spica, the ear of wheat. Let the truth planted in our souls grow through understanding to wisdom. In the place of the southeast, I hail the guardians of Zaniah, heaven's gate. May we find the gate of heaven and enter therein. I hail the two white stars, Antivorta and Postivorta, stars of the two goddesses of prophecy. By foreseeing the future, may we direct our lives with wisdom. I hail the guardians of the pale yellow star, Zavi Java, kennel of the hounds. Give us strength and loyalty to follow deity. I hail the guardians of the bright yellow star, Vendemiatrix, the great gatherer, star of vintage. May we transmute adversity into the wine of experience. In the southwest, I hail the guardians of Siama, star of the virgin's robe. Let us have humility when we wander at many stars. Pick the six now, put their torches in the form of a hexagram in the very center of the open part of this extraordinary temple of the singing stones. Singing because they are heard etherically to make sounds of different resonances attuned to the various radiations which they give. First, the six companions lift up their arms in the form of the hexagram, lifting up the torches, then placing them down. Now all the company <coughs> present join them in long lines, so there is a hexagram, but the new age needs now the eight-pointed star of Ishtar, which relates us to the stars. Therefore, they make the eight-pointed star, not statically, but in dynamic dance, radiating up, radiating. Now, let's join in and make the dance of the eight-pointed star of the goddess of Sirius and Venus, Ishtar, dancing in harmony with the old star of David, the age of Pisces. We dance the new aeon in, in the name of Virgo and Dana and Maya, uniting two cultures, the Gaelic culture and the American culture. Dance.
dance. As we dance, we feel the radiations of the stones. In the center, they form a power grid, a static power grid. But as we dance, energies rush from the center between the stones outwards to the world as we send forth thoughts of harmony between all religions and all cultures, each different, each an ori original, but each a part of the all and each person and each creature and each atom is original yet part of the cosmos round and round the stones now we dance forming a spiral pattern of intricate beauty using both arm movements and steps of various kinds as we are inspired to do as you dance you begin to feel the energies of the stones which are very powerful like electricity pure stellar power here on earth so we see how we had to ground ourselves first in the earthly temple of Dana and Virgo this is Aquarian, this is extraterrestrial, this is starry, this is Virgo, this is Sirius, nigh unto Virgo. The first priest speaks. Companions, let us hear of the vision of Dana, vouchsafed to the Irish healer, Sean Darian. I find myself in waking trance in a grassy place, and around me are spotted deer. There is a hill upon it, a woman who is surrounded by light. The way is rocky, but I climb the hill. Her hands are outstretched to me. By her is a, is a white hound. She has a snake bracelets on her upper arms and jeweled snakes on her gold dress. Over the dress she wears a white robe lined with silver. Her fair hair is braided with jewels. She is beautiful with a long, pale face, and on her head is a coronet of white and pink white roses. She has earrings on her right hand, and on her right hand is a ring with a great crystal held in her palm. Her cloak is held by a diamond brooch, and she wears a luminal. Her face is so bright I can scan scarcely see it. She has a lovely smile, and I see now the letters Dana. She shows me a scroll, and on it are inscribed the words, Go on, do well, preach my name. Hear now the vision of the goddess Maya, told by Olivia. I saw with amazement a goddess, and her body was made with crystallized copper light. I have seen beings made of crystallized gold and silver, but this was copper. She sat, I've never seen anyone like that in feature, she sat cross-legged and her face was turned over her right shoulder. Later I've seen pictures of Mayan people and she had exactly that profile. Her hair was raven-coloured and hang behind. She was a mighty being of glory from the stars. Now may we hear of the vision of the goddess vouchsafed to Douglas Reagan on his vigil. I saw the one of 10,000 names who came upon me in my own temple, and she laid down her hand and spoke to me concerning of the quest of, of vigil and of order, and said, The time is now. Go and do my great work. Is in, in, and in you I am well pleased and she kissed me with a passion never known before and then laid upon my head the duty that which I was to bestow Ave Dea Mater Ave Dea Mater May Priestess now tell us of the spiritual lightning that befell her 
in the temple of the monolith. The goddess gave me her blessings on starting a new lyceum in America, one of softness and gentle love, one that works for the highest good. We give thanks, now all the other companions give their testimony, and they notice that the goddess, and indeed the god, comes through all cultures and races. The priestess, first priestess now, displays a star map of Virgo. Companions, let us contemplate the mysteries of Virgo and Donna. Receive true vision. Behold the Virgin holding her wheat, wheat ear, the star Spica. Above her, Boots drives the wane around the pole star, and by him are Virgo's loyal hounds, the Canes Venatici. Centaurus, half man, half horse, is below her hand, tamed by her gentleness. The Virgin shines above the sea, monster Hydra, who bears on his mighty coils Corvus, the prophetic crow and the crater, the mystic cup. The Libran goddess, the Libran goddess, stands nearby weighing Virgo's golden grain on her scales, while the harvest is protected by the rampant lion Leo. The company now all meditate on Virgo and on Donna and realize that all over the world people see the stars and have their stories about the constellations, but these are no mere stories. They have been entrusted to the common people of the earth in myth. Let us meditate what this means, our own sun sign, the stars, to us, and feel them within ourselves as silvery glowing and vision of the inner eye. We are beginning to be a little withdrawn from this scene. We watch the priesthood lift up their hands and give thanks to Virgo and to Maya and to Quetzalcoatl. They send forth blessing to all. And we watch them now rather dreamily as they put out the fire and their fires and unwind their circle, moving now the path of the moon from right to left, and the sky is flushed over with coming evening. And they move the final court coil outside this strange temple, and those with inner eyes see mighty radiations from the star of Ishtar pour forth over the whole of this valley. The procession slowly wends its way now, out, and we know that in the castle they will share blessed grains and fruit. A meal will be shared. I don't think you and I will actually eat this meal unless we do so astrally, because you're coming back with me now to your own. Rise up, look down. Why? The valley is shrouded with mist. The mists of evening and Ireland fades. You are back. You are back indeed in your own time and place. Do drink a glass of water to come back thoroughly. I'm Olivia Robertson, Conigal Castle, Ellis Corsi, South Ireland, and I was helped by my brother Lawrence and by Gail Mack, priestess of Isis, and Douglas Reagan, Chief Nice of the Noble Order of Time. Do get hold of the works of A.E. 
I used to know him, Macmillan, and also the Lagerbal Aaron Irish Tech Society. I'll end with the blessings of the River of Health, Slaney, Schlaunte. <laughs>